Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's Open Classroom webinar. I trust everyone is safe and well, and that level two, stage two, is not treating you too badly. In today's webinar, we welcome back Cameron Boyle and Andrew Cole, who will be covering the topics listed on your screens right now. During both presentations, please feel free to use the text chat service on your GoToWebinar app to ask us any questions you may have during the two presentations. So, good afternoon again, Andrew, excuse me, Cameron, and please take it away. Thank you, Charles. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the road session of today's webinar. We have had numerous requests to show how to design a slip lane or on and off ramps. So today we're going to be using some of the newer road rehabilitation functionality to do this. The objective is to add additional lane width to the main road and then to treat that additional width as a slip lane or off-ramp onto the adjacent interchange. At the interchange, we will design a junction, then we will make changes to the slip lane and the junction would dynamically update. So stay tuned for more. Looking at the extent of this, we then put in the new road on the left hand side here, right next to the main road. Then moving up the road, we then go and put in PI number one over here. And then moving further up, we then end the road over here close to the interchange. Let's start off by going to file, select road file, and let's use road number 20. Giving it a name, let's call it slip lane. We then generate it as a string road and then selecting which template to use. This particular template will have no right hand side information because we want it right up against the main road. You'll see there's no curb on the right hand side. Starting off, we go to alignment, horizontal, graphical insert, or you can press F5 on your keyboard. Specifying the start point and calling the PI start. You have the option to use this start stake line extraction from CAD. You can either use it now or you can use it at a later stage when I show you the spreadsheet. I'm going to use it in the spreadsheet format because I want to go into more detail. Putting in PI number one and using the main road's left edge as a reference. Putting in PI number two. And then ending the road close to the interchange. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be this far from the interchange. You can go and place it anywhere. Let's call it end and put in a curve radius here of 1200. Pressing escape twice and because my road expert is switched on, Civil Designer will go through the design process with me. Switching off my fly path CAD layer and then taking a look at our new road. You can see at the start on the left hand side here, we're right next to the main road. Then at PI number one, there's a bit of a gap between the new road and the main road. And then on the right hand side, we finished the road close to the interchange. Let's focus in on the gap. You can see this gap. If you were to go to roads control center and you go and select the extract string option. There, by default, if you look on the top, we've got stake line, but there's no additional information on that stake line. If you go to alignment, horizontal, edit alignment. This is the spreadsheet that records your horizontal PI information. If I go and switch on the extract from CAD, I can then extract from any CAD or road string entity use that information for my horizontal alignment from my start point to PI number one. Let's close it and save it. Going through the extraction again, 
And then if you were to go to your road control center, you can see now we've got that additional information from chain inch zero, which we call PI start to PI one. If you go and click on this icon on the left hand side, we want to extract the information from existing road entities only. Specify which road entity you want. So I go to the left edge of the main road. I left click. And once I do that, Civil Designer picks up that the existing road is A13. Which string do I want to extract from? So you've got a variety of choices. There's all the strings associated to that road. And then pick up the left road edge. Once it's selected, I can go and right click and extract string. Going back to the control center, you'll see the text is written in red. If I select it, you can see on the plan view it's highlighted. I can then go and right click and select recalculate road. Going through the design process, you'll see the new road is moved next to the main road. Let's look at this in a cross-sectional format. I go to section, graphical edit, and select my cross-section position. Looking at what we've got, we've got the new road on the left-hand side, and then we've got the main road on the right-hand side. If you can't see your main road, you can go to your display settings, and on the bottom right, switch on strings model. And then pressing page down, looking at the cross-sections. From this, we can see that our new road on the left-hand side isn't quite the same height as what we've got with the main road on the right-hand side. So the objective now is to change the elevation of our new road. I'm going to go and close this. Going to my display settings, I'm going to turn on the contours so you can see how they get updated as we make changes. I've selected carriageways only, so I'm only using the contours for the carriageways. There you can see they've been updated. Now selecting my roads, you can see the vertical alignment. We've got information for the entire chainage range from chainage 0 to 667. Selecting the road and then right clicking and selecting road operations vertical alignment. Looking at the graphical view, you can see we've just got a straight line. If I move this up and I place my cursor on the vertical alignment or the long section, you can see there's a cross on the plan. So that gives me a good idea as to where we want to use the vertical PI. So at approximately change 430, you can go and insert a PI. Alternatively, you can go and select the spreadsheet option here, right click and select insert rows, putting in a change of 430, and then I'm putting in a rounded value of 30, and you can see how that rounded value will change. Lastly, I'm then going to go and select extract from CAD. So we want to pick up the elevation of the main road from chainage 0 to chainage 430. There you can see it's been updated on the graphical page. Closing that and saving it. You can see the contours haven't quite been updated yet, so we still need to go to our control panel, go and select the icon on the left hand side from change 0 to change 430. Target entities, we're going to use the road entities only. And then we're going to select the height options from entities. Click on OK. Select the main road's left edge. Again, all the strings associated with that road is picked up, click on select, right click and select extract. Now going back to my control center, you can see the text is changed to red. If I select it, it's highlighted in the plan view. 
I can again go and right click and select recalculate road. And from this we've updated the vertical alignment. If I go back to section, graphical edit, go and select where I want the cross section to be. And there you can see the updated elevation of our new road. As I press page down, we're browsing through the different cross sections. And then you'll also see that the contours have been updated. Closing this and going back to the vertical alignment. Before I do so, I'm just going to go and turn off the contours of my road. Select my road again. Right click, road operations, vertical alignment. Looking at the spreadsheet, if you recall, I went and put in an elevation of 30. You can see that has now been updated accordingly. Just making this a bit bigger, I want to show you what the vertical alignment looks like. Instead of doing the design, I'm going to right click and select a design that's already done for me. I'm going to go and select read CSV file. Select the file to use and then open that. All right, so just to show you that it's been updated and the reason why I've done this is to save time. Closing that and saving the information. Design done, let's move on to the junction. The objective is to put in an intersection or junction at this point. Going to junctions, selecting add junction. Specify my intersecting road and then clicking on my main road. And so move this dialog a bit out of the way. Okay, you can go and specify your coordination interval. Then when I go and select the left curve, because we're using 8.4 here, you can see there's a display or preview on our bow mouths. So I have a good idea as to which radius to use. Let's go and put this in as 5. If I now go and select the right curve option, you'll see the left curve information has been updated. So the text is moved and the bow mouth radius has been inserted. Looking on the right hand side, again it's too big, so let's go and change this radius. Let's make it 20. Click on another cell to see if 20 would be sufficient. I'm happy with that. If you do go and specify to pick up your bow mouth information from your CAD, the preview would then also be updated from your CAD entities. Remember that you do have the option to go and put in a center island if need be. Going through the design process, Looking at the output bar on the right hand side, you can see that the information is being updated. So all my coordinates are listed and you can see the junction has been updated. The next objective here is to make changes to our, our new road and then I'll come back to the junction and you can see how the junction has been updated. Changing my view, then going to alignment edge levels and using the insert edge width point functionality. When I select this, the edge control appears. If I go and select spreadsheet, that is what my existing grades look like. If I select widths at the bottom, that's the current width that we have. Now I'm going to go and make changes to that. So let's move this out the way. I'm going to make my plan view active. So I'm going to click there. And then reading my prompt, I can indicate position for width control point. So moving it to the right position, pressing J, enter. So you can see that the spreadsheet on the right hand side has been updated. Looking at the next spot, same thing, press J and enter. In a similar manner, if I wanted to, I could go back to alignment, edge levels, and use the delete edge width option. But I'm happy with this. I'm just going to update the last width on the left hand side. And then I'm going to go and close the spreadsheet.
saving the information and regenerating the edge widths. And so there it's been updated. And if we look at our junction again, the junction two has dynamically updated. If we go to the split where our new road leaves the main road, it may be that you want to make it wider on the left hand side. And there's numerous ways that you can do this. One of the ways is to use a CAD line or spline in this case, and then use the rehabilitation functionality to make it wider. So I'm turning on my CAD layer that I drew in the spline. And then selecting the spline so that you can see the extent of it. We don't need to use that to make our new road wider. I do so by going back to alignment, regression, and selecting extract strings. We're looking at single carriageway. We don't need to use your CAD entities and we're looking at the left edge. Then putting in your height constraints, we're looking at the CAD entities again, and we don't retain the crossfall. So we don't use the current string slopes. Go and select my spline, right click and extract string. Click on OK, and then going through the design process again. There it is. You can see our road control center opens. I no longer need to update anything there. I'm just going to go back to my CAD and I'm going to turn on my road markings. If you join us next week, I'll show you how you can go about putting in your road markings. And then just to show you the end product, if I go and right click and render view, changing my zoom view, there you can see the additional width on the left hand side of our main road treating it as an off-ramp or a slip lane onto our interchange. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, cheers for now. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Cameron. That was fantastic. We're now going to be handing over to Andrew with his personal version 8.3 and 8.4 highlights package. Andrew, please take it away. Good day. In my segment of today's webinar, I'm going to be showing you some of the new and relatively new civil designer functions that I find very useful. The first function that I want to look at today is the image cropping function, which allows you to snip out a portion of an image and save this as a totally separate image file with the associated positioning world file. To show you how this image cropping function works, I'll be using this height bay image which is similar to the one that we use for the survey and terrain training, but this particular image has a much higher resolution. Okay, so I'm zooming into the area of the site that we need to focus in on. And then I'm going to be drawing a rectangle. I'm drawing a rectangle to show you how the traditional add custom clip to image has worked up to now. You would select your image, then right click on the image and select the Add Custom Clip to Image option. You then get prompted to indicate the polyline or ellipse with which to do the clipping. So I'm just clicking on the rectangle in this case. And then you can see that area of the image will display. The the problem with this is you're still working with the full image in the background. So a much more efficient and better way of working is to make use of the new crop image functionality, where you create a totally separate image file that you can then insert and use in your project or in your drawing. Okay, so I've just undid the traditional image clip that I've just done and the drawing of the rectangle. And I'm zooming in on the area that we want to use for the image cropping function, the newer image cropping function. Okay, so once again, I have to select the image. If you're struggling to select the image in a zoomed in view, then you can always use the selection filters. In this case, I'm just using the quick selection filter and I'm selecting the image. 
Okay. All right, and then I can right click, and in this case, we're selecting the saved cropped image. So this is going to create a totally separate file uh, with its own positioning file. Okay, so we get prompted for the upper left corner and then the lower right hand corner for this cropped image. Okay. And then I can save that file. Okay, so there the cropped image file and the world file has been saved successfully. And now it's just a matter of inserting that file. So I'm going to go to Applications, my CAD. Alternatively, you could use the Insert Toolbar, and I'm inserting that image. And the new image is positioned correctly by means of the georeferencing file that was created. Okay, and then we can just have a look at how neatly it's been inserted. You can see the previous full image is still selected and you can see everything is tying in very neatly so that positioning file is, is working as it should okay so I can just delete the old file and there we left with the new file okay if I zoom all you can see the other file now the previous image is no longer there and we're just working with this smaller image. If I open Windows Explorer just to show you those files, the initial file, if I look at the image properties under the details, you'll see it was 150 dpi horizontal and vertical resolution. And now with the soccer field image that are just cropped we look at those properties and the details you'll see you don't lose any resolution so you still have the 150 dpi horizontally and vertically okay so still have the same resolution on your cropped image and you have the positioning file to position it correctly so a very useful function to reduce the size of your larger images. Okay, then moving on to the next new function, which is a function that I really like, and I'm sure anyone struggling to validate a terrain surface will really appreciate this new functions in the terrain application. And it's this model remove invalid lines function which will automatically check for and remove any invalid or crossing lines in your DTM surface. This is going to save you a lot of time when trying to validate your model. To show you how this function works I have a project with a terrain surface that was created by translating some roads along with their intersections to a DTM surface. I'm firstly going to run the validate model just to check our surface for any errors. So just select the surface that you want to validate. And in this case, we have picked up a few errors. No perimeter could be found. So the tracking routine has stopped. Um, and if you click OK, we zoom into the area where the error, first error was picked up. So there are some crossing lines in this particular instance, which we need to then remove with that, remove invalid lines. Generally, you would delete the lines and add some new lines to fix an error like this. But if you've got a big surface, this new remove invalid lines is going to save you time and effort. But auto fixing all those issues so I'm just going to zoom all so we can run that uh, removing valid lines on the whole site and then it's model and remove invalid lines just select the surface that you want to work with 
Okay, so now we can check model validate model again. And after that removing of the invalid lines, you can see this line model has scanned successfully. Okay, so that's really going to save you lots of time and effort. Okay, then just S to refresh. Next up, I want to touch on the enhancements that have been made to the terrain strings functionality. A large part of the terrain strings development has been to make one terrain string see another terrain string. So there is no longer a need to translate your string to a DTM surface and merge surfaces when you want to tie into an existing string platform. So for this exercise, I've got an existing terrain string platform and I'm going to be designing two additional strings next to it. Okay, so I'm designing a new string using the string creation option, the strings menu, and string from polyline, and I'm selecting the middle string. I'm just going to name it middle, and I'm assigning it a fixed height of 252, 252. Okay, and then right click quit. Okay, so now I'm selecting my terrain string. We can just verify that in the properties bar that it is the terrain string. Elevation is 252. Okay, so now I want to go strings with the string selected, string creation, create child. And we're putting the child on the outside. So this is a grade to surface string. Remember, you've got various options there as far as your child string offset string can be set, the various settings, but in this case we're just grading to a surface. Okay, and in this case I want to include the strings model in the grading, so it's, it's going to see the existing string when it ties in. Okay, I'm just going to go switch on the banks here in the properties bar. Okay, then I'm just going to do a render view so we can see how that ties in. So in the render view, you can clearly see that this second string platform has actually noticed and taken the first string bank into consideration. And that bank has been draped along the existing string. Okay, I'm just going to escape out of the render view and then I'm going to design the next string platform. So this next string platform I'm just going to drape on the ground and then also take that second middle string into consideration. So I'm going to use the strings, string creation string from polyline option. In this case these are just polylines but it could also be normal CAD entities or you could define your string graphically as well by just clicking along the desired path. Okay so string from polyline and this is just going to be my bottom string and I'm interpolating it from the original ground surface. And I want to use the strings model for interpolation as well. Okay, so it's going to pick up the bank of that second middle string. And then if I just select the newly created string, you'll see all those vertices, the vertices all along your string with the levels that were interpolated. Okay, and then let's just have a look at that in the render view as well. Okay, so you can see it's been draped on the DTM surface, the main portion of the string. But in this section where we've got an existing bank, it will pick up the levels from the, the terrain string. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just going to escape out of the render view. Okay, I'm just making use of the new control center and I'm using the strings tab at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just going to pin that open, just pinning the control center open. I can always drag that a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I'm just switching the visibility. There are a couple of options here. On a right click, you can select, delete, look at the properties, or show. But in this case, I'm just switching the visibility of my bottom platform off. As you can see, the control center allows you to switch the visibility of your design entities on and off without having to open the display setting. Okay, then I'm just changing to the road section of the control center. And then I'm switching on the visibility of this road of mine, also strings road that was designed earlier. So what I'd like to show you in this case is that the platform string would also then see the road string and be able to interpolate or pick up levels from the road string. So I'm just going to go render view just to show you. I'm just doing the render view just to show you the current position of this string bank. It's actually running to ground and it isn't seeing the actual road, um, the string road bank. So what I'm going to do then is just re-height that string. So if you want to reinterpolate the levels, you can go to the string editing and you can re-height a string. And in this case, we want to include the strings model for interpolation. Okay, so now if I go render view again, and then you can clearly see that it's read in the correct levels from the banks of the strings road. So overall making the strings platform design much more dynamic. And that's me for today. Until next time, cheers. Thank you, Andrew and Cameron. That was great. And thank you very much to all of you who attended today. Please remember, if you would like any further information with regards to Civil Designer, please use the email address listed on your screens right now. And please also remember to request a Civil Designer version 8.4 download link from our website's homepage if you haven't done so already. Once again, thank you for your time today. See you all next week, Thursday at the same time and same place using the same link. Have a great afternoon, weekend, and goodbye for now.